Hello, my feathered friends, it's Silent Signs from I Dream of Indy, and today we are taking a look at Crut the Mythic Wings. Crut is a hack and slash side scrolling platformer based on a 2018 Thai animated film entitled Crut the Himifan Warriors. While I myself am not particularly familiar with Thai mythology, it does appear that both the game and the film draw from this as a reference point. Crut opens up on a world at war. The Garuda race have been invaded by merciless ogres. One brave warrior, our protagonist in this title, appears ready to lay down his life for his people, and either because of or despite this determination, he is defeated by the ogres, his body badly injured, and he finds himself on a mysterious island where he comes in contact with a shrouded figure. As per usual when it comes to mysterious shrouded figures on a deserted island, they don't offer a lot of answers as to who they are, but they do offer help in the form of silver wings that, of course, come at a price. These Silver wings are also referred to as mythic wings, hence the title of the game, and require our protagonist to seek out different powers from different beings in this universe in order to gather enough power to defeat the ogres and restore his people's land. And how do you do that? Well, by hacking and slashing your way through baddies, of course. How else? Crut offers up three different difficulty options, easy, medium, and hard, and little else in the way of options and settings. You can change the graphical resolution and the quality, you can update the language, and that's about it. Before being thrown headfirst into gameplay, you are offered a brief built-in tutorial that explains how to play and the different combos that your character can pull off, including a special that allows him to fly because, I mean, he is a bird after all and his superpower is wings, so that makes sense. These mythic wings also allow you to restore some health and to shoot projectiles from afar, which is very helpful when you are facing off against the various enemies and bosses in this title. The game is broken up into six different stages that you can distinguish between by the types of locations that they are in. Everything else is pretty much the same gameplay wise. It is a lot of hitting and rolling or dodging and then hitting again and then rolling and dodging and then unlocking a checkpoint with the cash that you earned. And those checkpoints come at a hefty cost of a thousand crut bucks I don't know what the currency is actually called, that's just what I'm going to call it. But these checkpoints are also where you can upgrade your character using the same form of currency, your crut bucks, if you will. And by the time you've already paid that thousand dollars to unlock the checkpoint, there's little that you can actually afford by way of upgrades. But if you do kind of save them for a little while, there are upgrades available for health, power, critical attacks, extra combos, or your wing power. Your upgrades do carry over when you die, so it almost feels like the game wants you to be unsuccessful at a level a few times and go back and be able to upgrade and get stronger, but I don't want to do that. I kind of just want to get to the end. Boss battles don't feel really challenging, but they do feel very slow and monotonous. There's not a lot of skill to it. It's more the skill of having enough patience to be able to hit once, dodge, hit once again, dodge forever and ever until they eventually give up and fall to the ground in a rather anticlimactic scene where they just give you what you were looking for the whole time anyway. Also, because of the whole setup of the game, I fully expected that with each boss defeated, you would gain a new power since that was your quest to go to each of these locations, get that power for the wings, and then eventually be powerful enough to take on the main enemy, the ogre that defeated you in the beginning. But that is not the case here. You have that currency-based upgrade system and that's it. No fundamental changes in gameplay from beginning to end. Even beating the game comes with little reward or reason to play again. You unlock best records screen where you can see how many deaths it took and how long it took you to get from point A to point B in the game and you can go back and play the game again at potentially a higher difficulty unless you already beat it on hard in which case 
Mm -mm. Graphics and crud are kind of a mixed bag. Some of the environments are really pleasant to look at and you do have a decent variety of different locations that you can visit. Each level comes with its own theme and they're kind of stereotypical themes that you would expect. Beach level, castle level, rainforest level, fairly generic but not bad looking and they do have some neat animations to the backgrounds in them. The enemies do get a bit repetitive though. They all kind of seem the same even if they look different they play exactly the same you just do that same hit dodge hit dodge until you die or they die whichever comes first I did also appreciate the portrait art and cutscenes, which are for the most part just still images, but they do have a really aesthetically pleasing look to them that I certainly appreciated. It was a nice contrast to the CG movie looking animations of the rest of the gameplay. It's not an offensively bad looking title, it just looks feels plays like it is a game based on a movie which historically typically not the best. The soundtrack is pretty epic, although a little bit repetitive. It is fully orchestrated and definitely sets a nice dramatic tone for this game that isn't actually all that dramatic in content. I mean, yes, the story itself is dramatic, but the actual gameplay, not so much. No voice acting to help us connect with the characters, but there are plenty of great sound effects that are implemented into this title. You have the clanking of swords and the explosions in the background, rocks falling, nothing exceptional or standout, but certainly not offensively bad. And that's kind of just my overall take on this title in general. Crut the Mythic Wings is not a bad bad game, it's just not a particularly exciting one. I never ran into any bugs or performance issues on the PC, a few lagging scenes here and there, but nothing game breaking. And overall, the gameplay was effective. I mean, I didn't feel like it was cheap. It just wasn't that enthralling. It didn't capture my interest. The story was fine. I think I would just rather watch this movie, honestly. Crut the Mythic Wings isn't necessarily for the birds. It's just also not for me. Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free content here at iDream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors and legends that help to support this channel through channel memberships. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Adriana Amato, CJR, Julian Colbus, Jesse, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Christian Cruz, PSC, Solarusi, and Chic Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Nathan Moore, Skepticism, Mitchell Hall, Jen Rose, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The B Farini's Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian Mind, Lord Metroid, C Coil and Larkison. Thank you so much for all that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for iDream of Indie. Everybody else head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming. <laughs>